Entertainment and mice are among the most vulnerable and the most hit sectors by the COVID-19 pandemic because both of them, from the production to the consumption, they require a large number of people to be together at a particular point. On this particular episode of Doing Business in Rwanda, we will talk to different key players in these sectors to understand the impact that have been felt on the ground. I will be your host, Narengwa Fiona Muthoni. As governments continue to put forward measures to safeguard the public and limit the spread of COVID-19, the nightlife and entertainment industries are under increasing pressure to suspend businesses until further notice. Normally, artists make a living out of uh, showbiz, showing off and then making business out of it. So uh, this pandemic has limited opportunities uh, of uh, artists going out there, meeting their fans, and uh, making money out of doing concerts, uh, which is normally the main revenue uh, generator in, in, in Rwanda. Because uh, we are not in other developed countries where an artist can make money out of uh, uh, selling records, uh, hard copies and uh, even the, the, the soft copies, the online sales are limited. So it has uh, heavily impacted on, on, on the uh, revenues of, of the artists. Um, most of, the, uh, of our job, we do, uh, we do it where there's a lot of people, um, a gathering of a lot of people, either in a club or concerts. So as you know, most of those are not currently um, be, being doable. We cannot host a concert or go to the club. And obviously uh, that's how it, it has been affecting me as a DJ. <laughs> Annually, the four-day Ubumono Arts Festival brings people together from all over the world to one platform to celebrate, unite and heal with performances ranging from dance, movement, poetry, theatre to even acrobats. The founder Hope Azeda shares the new realities on the ground. It's been very, um, it's been like a a learning journey. It's like I'm learning to walk and walking at the same time because we are theater people and we love heart to heart connection. So looking at just a screen and imagining that screen has like a million people behind it that are not physically present, it's very challenging. But also the fact that uh, we love eye contact, we love physical things, but we're trying to see how we trust the process and you know embrace the new norm and uh, just dance along. So it's, it, it's really coming well. And our intention was to build our audience online and just, you know, take this um, content online, which content is really about storytelling. And, it, you know, it's that kind of art that really has purpose in our, our lives and the kind of art that really starts very difficult conversations. And just to trust the process and saying, oh, well, you go to the, this and most, this, go to this unknown space, feels like sending a child, like just take that path and go. But it's fine and it's, we have to do it. We have to do it, we have no choice but to do it. And it's really coming up well. Uh, our main target is of course young people and they're embracing it well. We've been sending out challenges and they're embracing it and you can see the impact. Mm. You can see the impact and we are going to, we are, it, it, it's gonna get better. The engagement is very good because first of all, it's, it's, it's good on different levels. It's good in terms of, you, you can now see there's content with some depth, not just content for just like staying just alive on, on, on online. They have stepped up their game because we challenge them to create certain stories like around their lives. And, but the challenging bit of it, of course, not all of them can access 
uh, online because internet is very expensive. They don't have like proper telephones or proper cameras. And sometimes they send us this content which you have to clean up or work out to send a cameraman. So the infrastructure is still a bit challenge around their world. But in terms of engaging and using these tools, they're way ahead of us. They've, they have been there and they just need uh, guidance in terms of skills on like cleaning it up for, to just have like clean content up there. Kigali City was last year ranked Africa's second most popular conference destination by International Congress and Convention Association. To the GDP, meetings, incentives, conventions and exhibition tourism contributed 88 million US dollars in 2019 from 56 million US dollars in 2018. But as a result of the pandemic, the Rwanda Convention Bureau said they are evaluating possible recovery strategies for this sector. Uh, for the case of Rwanda, those different events have not been cancelled, they're rather they're being postponed. And we're really working uh, closely with the organizers to find other slots. Some have already confirmed dates in the last quarter of the year. Others are looking in the first quarter of the next year. So the progress is being made to make sure those events still happen in the country. So uh, with regard to impact is still being assessed and, and numbers still being collected, but uh, an immediate answer we can give for the quarter or one, uh, most of the events uh, postponed of March and April, we were expecting to get uh, uh, with uh, 8 million US dollars. So that's an income which has not been generated in this quarter. Although I recall that we are looking at options of having it in other quarters. And it's uh, a percent in terms of percentage, 10% of the targets we had this year, which is 88 million US dollars. At a time when everyone is encouraged to stay home, people are looking for different activities online to keep them entertained. Numerous artists have seen the demand and have been quick to organize online concerts. Tom Close, an award-winning Rwandan artist, takes us through the preparation process for an online concert, as well as DJ Toxic shared more on the online engagement levels from the people. Of course you need to rehearse, and rehearsing takes uh, some sort of budget. You need to put a team together, a team of musicians, backup vocal, vocalists, if you need any. But for me, because it was something new, uh, during that time it was even very hard to move around, to uh, go from maybe my home to where I can rehearse, where I can meet these other uh, team members. Uh, it took me a lot of energy and efforts moving around, putting people together and then rehearsing uh, that I only had to rehearse once before, before the concert. But because the people I was working with were professionals and they knew my music, it was not as, uh, as hard as it sounds. Uh, we, we only had to rehearse each song once to make sure that they get the notes well. Uh, what limited the errors w were the, the size of the team because I had a small team, a pianist, a guitarist, and then someone who was playing the drums. So if I had a bigger team, the, 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 the error margin would be wider. So when we did uh, that concert, uh, they are normally on YouTube watching music, but they wanted that experience of seeing a musician performing the songs live. Uh, we got an audience of around 10,000 people through uh, my Instagram page and then on the YouTube channel that we, we we stream the concert on. It's okay, you know, um, it's not uh, like the other DJs that I talk to who are not um, in Rwanda, but um, for us who are just getting started to know how all these things works uh, with PayPal, where you can put your number there and maybe get something from, you know, the fans and all that, because obviously we're not making any money and lies are um, these IG lives are uh, free most of the time and uh, uh, well it's we are just getting used to it yeah but it's not like something you, you would say that this is a source of income that I'll consider during this period of COVID-19 you know when you stop doing the live 
uh, at the end it shows you how many people went on and off so the traffic usually go around 2000 and 3400 if a comprehensive recovery plan and needed financial resources are not mobilized, COVID-19 may have long-term effects on the industry. Both the private sector, players and the government have a role to play in the recovery process. Uh, in our country right now, they're just in more like consultative meetings on how they can support. We have seen some um, Google forms and online forms asking how uh, what have you been done, doing? Like more like survey. We have seen survey forms, and when maybe survey forms come your way, people are trying to see how they can help. I think they're trying to map on how they can support. Uh, just yesterday, we had a, a, a meeting with the Ministry of Youth and Culture, which is now my culture, and uh, with several artists with with different stakeholders in this industry, and we're just brainstorming on how they can come on board and help. They have the will, but they want, they're looking for the how now. And that's where we are right now as Rwanda. They're looking for the how. Many sectors in the country are moving towards being digitized, and the entertainment and my sectors should not be left out. The artist got to answer the question if online is the future, and what needs to be worked on for Rwandan creatives to compete on a global stage. It's a feature because right now, the content we are creating now and how we are creating and crafting it is not just a short-term basis. We are also creating something, we are experimenting something, and we cannot let it go. So that means we are going to have an audience that will always wait for us online. So come 2021, come 2022, because they keep saying we will recover in two years, Whenever the, we, even if it comes to next year, we will have one foot in the what the festival used to be and one foot on the budget because we have now created two families. We have a family that is physical, but we also, we also have a family that is online that we cannot abandon. So we'll have to provide for both worlds. It's still a challenge to make uh, money out of online concerts. Uh, first of all, because it's a new concept. Uh, we need to push it and sell it out to the sponsors, uh, those who want or wish to advertise through these concerts, because that's the only one of the ways we can make money out of it. And then uh, we we are also uh, we should also look into uh, maybe uh, going into pay per view uh, to make sure that even these fans who are watching, even if it's a very small amount of money but they pay it and it goes to the artist for, for their efforts. First thing is first, I think, working together. Um, most of the artists that we see uh, here in, in Rwanda, I've seen, uh, I've seen a lot, I've worked with them a lot. Um, they need to unify, you know, not just see artists and say that I'm 100% I'm, uh, I'm um, sure that I'm gonna survive on my own, because at the end of the day, when when you go represent the country you're going to represent rwanda so uh, i think one thing that we need is unify to work together as a team as rwanda not just one artist we see blowing for let's say three months six months and then the next uh, six months he doesn't have any project and then another artist comes so i think if we need to get our music out of the country and sell internationally and do concerts and everything out of this country, we need to unify. That brings us to the end of today's episode of Doing Business in Rwanda, where we got to talk to key players in both the entertainment and the my sector to understand the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic, as well as the future plans. I was your host, Naringwa Fiona Muthoni. Feel free to write to us on Twitter at CNBC Africa. Thank you so much for watching it. Bye for now.